substantial decrease in deaths is overshadowed by the spike in the number of officers that have been killed by gunfire. 15 of those have been multiple shootings, and that is the most this nation's seen since 1981. Now, thankfully, Tallahassee isn't showing a direct correlation. Well, Angie and Lee, April 15th is not typically the most favorite day for Americans. It's, of course, we're the last day to fork over those taxes to Uncle Sam. But when tea parties really went viral last year, it's kind of changed the way folks have looked about that. And as you can see behind me here, there are hundreds of people out on the lawn at Florida's Capitol. Now, you also have another unique way to raise money. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, now this is Bobo. We just wanted to introduce this to everybody. For a dollar, everybody can take a photo with him. And as you can see on the sign here, this says, Help Make Cancer History. Yes, that is cheesy, but it is good. <laughs> well, less than two hours ago, more than 75 friends, family, and faculty at Florida State were here at Langford Green for a prayer vigil in honor of Vince Binder. Now, even with all the latest developments in his disappearance, his friends tell me there's never a reason to not have hope. Investigators won't say if foul play is suspected at this time, but they did say they haven't ruled it out either. Two, four. Heather Bynes, WCTV Eyewitness News, Tallahassee. I would like them to spend the rest of their life remembering what they did, remembering, you know, the lives that they ruined. When Rain Blomberg heard the news that his daughter's estranged husband, Theo Connolly, was arrested Friday in connection with her murder and that more severe charges have been added against Herman and Ruby Evans, he says he wasn't surprised. But as more is revealed into what led to his daughter's death, he's still searching for answers. When it's your child is that you know the reason they're here was you. You know, you... You didn't just contribute DNA, you, someplace in your heart, you asked God for this. And to have it taken away, you question why. Rain says he knew from day one of her disappearance that he would never see Sunday alive again. A tough pill to swallow, even to this day. I was fortunate in the fact that I talked to her the day that it happened. And our last words to each other, she called me Poppy, and she said, oh, well, I love you, Poppy, and I'll see you tonight. And I said, I love you too, Sunday. Not everybody gets that, you know, don't get to say those goodbyes like that. But in all the darkness that has surrounded the Blomberg family, Rain is holding on to his precious memories of his little girl. I don't want my daughter remembered for how she died. You know, I mean, she was a beautiful, <laughs> you know, she was beautiful physically, but her spirit was un unbelievable. I mean, she had a smile and a personality that just... It, it sparked happiness and sparked energy and sparked life, and that's what she needs to be remembered for. But I know one doggone thing. He was operating that bus out there two goddamn fast, and that wasn't the first time. Betty Smith says minutes before the bus driver, Tim Kelly, was involved in the crash, he ran her off the road into this church parking lot. She says he was barreling down Highway 268, tailgating her car. When I looked up, this school bus was coming. Just minutes later, Smith watched as the bus veered off the road and smashed into the tree line. She grabbed her cell phone, called 911, and ran to help the students evacuate the mangled bus. So I hollered to the kids to get out of the bus, because I was scared it was going to explode. And one of the little children was screaming, they were screaming, they can't get out, so they kicked the winner out. Smith remembers finding Desheremy Murray's limp body after she was ejected through the front window. So I let down to her, and I, and I, I felt so like that, I got up off. And then I just started talking to her. I just started talking to her. I don't know what I said to her, but I just started talking to her. And then she... And blood was shooting out of her mouth. Still no movement. I mean, you could just could tell that she was... Like that might have been her last breath. Smith says the images of mangled steel, debris, and blood will stick with her forever. That's the worst thing I have ever seen, and I don't want to see nothing like that no more. For the past year and a half, Kenny Fielder has been hitting the road. After retiring from a union job after 20 years, he bought this rig with the plan of hauling seafood until he retired. Now he says that dream might be cut short. It looks like it's coming to an end. You know, it's something I, you know, I figured on doing for about another eight, ten years. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I really don't think it's going to happen. When he opened up his 53-foot trailer for us Wednesday afternoon, it was nearly empty. 
Fielder says he usually carries 20 to 25,000 pounds of seafood during his route from Tampa up the West Coast and ending in Atlanta, Georgia. He says Wednesday he'd be lucky if there's 4,000 pounds on board. He says the decline started with losing one or two pickups a week. Now instead of 13 stops, he might see half of that, and that means huge losses in profit. We'll, we'll be pushing $20,000 by the end of this week. You know, and then, and then next week if I don't get a run, then it, it could be anywhere from, you know, twelve to $15,000 a month. And that's what, it, what I'm looking at. Although he doesn't know what tomorrow will bring, for now, he'll keep on trucking. I'm loyal to the market. I'm going to haul until they say no more. And after that, I mean, I don't know. Eleven days ago, Vincent Binder left his friend's apartment at the lakes and started walking home down Airport Drive. Since then, it seems the 29-year-old graduate student of communication at FSU has vanished into thin air. Then I started talking to all the professors and just kind of going, have you seen him? Has he shown up for classes? Once that didn't happen, then um, something was wrong. Friends and colleagues spent the weekend waiting in water, scouring the area he was last seen in, looking for any sign of Vince. It's horrendous. Um, it, it's a heavy burden to carry around. His friends handed out more than 60 ribbons Monday to those who know Vince from school, keeping him at the forefront of all of their minds. He cared for everybody around him, and I think that this is sort of our return of that, us all coming together um, to care for him as much as he cared for the people that he interacted with every day. Flyers like these have been posted up all across the capital city with the hope that as folks come up here to pay their bill, they'll see the flyer and hopefully have some information that will be helpful to police. So far, the Tallahassee Police Department's investigation has turned up dry, but a tip has landed two investigators in Miami, Florida since Friday. Police won't say what they're doing there and what they're hoping to find. They say home is where the heart is, but for the goes of family, their home may look a little different than most. Yeah, it's a bed. This RV became their home away from home when they sold everything they owned, packed up their car, and hit the road. Seventeen years later, they haven't looked back. America is our backyard. Um, we don't have, I mean, we have a very small living space, and we've lived in even smaller than what we have now, um, but we've never felt like oh gosh, we don't have anything. I feel like we have everything. Dennis and Kimberly's theater business, Activated Storytellers, was their original reason for riding off into the sunset. But the freedom it's allowed and the experiences it offers has kept them doing it all these years. Being able to go places and do things, uh, uh, to me, that's real wealth. It's not what you have, it's what you can do. And they didn't do it alone. They raised their son Zephyr while out on the road, giving him more experiences from 2 to 18 years old than most get in a lifetime. Just being able to live, see so many different cultures, all the different regions of America, and so much <laughs> that you just can't duplicate in books alone. So it may seem a little unorthodox, perhaps even crazy to some, but for the Gozas, home isn't where it's located, it's where you park it. Heather Bryant, WCTV Eyewitness News, Tallahassee. There are two words that send chills down the spine of any law enforcement officer. Shot fire, Tal! Shot fire! On the ground! On the ground! Although this particular stop didn't end in the death of this officer, many just like it have over the years. That's why those in uniform say no stop is ever routine. Florida's Republican legislative leaders say they're looking at a special session beginning Wednesday to discuss commuter and high-speed rail issues. Well, it's every parent's worst nightmare, and one school district spent the day preparing for an event they hope never happens. That is a school shooting. Now, the Sheriff's Office, Monticello Police, EMS, and the Jefferson County School District came together to run through an active shooter exercise. Teams ran through the school to find the gunman and brought students out to safety. Because school shootings can happen really anywhere, they want students and law enforcement to be prepared for the worst. People who have children in these schools and the teachers who teach in these schools, it's got to give them a feeling of confidence that there is some preparation into it in the event that we were to have this type of uh, event in Jefferson County. The active shooter exercise was paid for by the Department of Homeland Security. Well, next week, foster kids from across Florida will meet at the National Guard training facility at Camp Landing to learn leadership skills, healthy eating habits, and most importantly, to play.